Hi, it's Rob Moore here. Welcome to the Money Podcast and the live video Money Podcast. I've got five ways that you can cure your overspending. You might just spend too much, not budget, or you may have a spending addiction. I know I had a spending addiction for many years, and to be honest, I don't think it's gone. I think I've just learned better ways of dealing with it and managing it. So there are five ways I think we can help you cure your overspending. I've made a couple of notes so that I can stay on point because I tend to go off on tangents. No tangents in this video. So the first one is wait 24 hours. Just find something you like, you want to buy, and then wait 24 hours before you buy it. The second one is looking into the future. How will you feel looking back? The third one is give yourself a maximum budget and then spend as a reward. The fourth one is turning your spending addiction into investing addiction. And then the fifth one is giving someone else control of that budget for now. So let's detail each one. So we all often feel strongly emotional. And then when we spend, it's to alleviate that emotion. You've worked hard. You want to reward yourself. You feel down. You want to buy something to pick yourself up. You know, you want to be recognized by other people and feel important and loved. You buy stuff to show that you're successful or you buy stuff to give away to others to make them like you. And all of those things are emotional reactions and the spending is driven by emotion rather than logic. Now, when that emotion is gone and it's normally, sometimes it's five seconds later, really strong emotions apparently only last a few seconds. Um, you know, maybe slightly less strong emotions, but still they might, you know, they might subside in a day or two. So, you see the thing you want to buy. You say to yourself, I'm going to wait 24 hours and then decide if I want to buy it. And then in those 24 hours, you research on eBay, you price shop online, you feel you know, less emotional, you wait until you're feeling logical, and then you say to yourself, do I really need this rather than want this? Now, my guess is you'll end up buying half of the stuff that you currently buy uh, and you'll buy a lot less of what you don't need. Now, when you buy stuff that you don't need that goes down in value, that compounds and over time, that's a huge burn of your capital and you should preserve your capital with your dear life. Okay, the second thing then um, is, and I never used to be able to do this until about five years ago, and that is to project yourself forward a day or a week or a month and think, will I use this? Will I get benefit from this? Do I really need it? I love buying clothes, just always buy clothes. I like to buy very expensive designer clothes. And sometimes I'll I'll be attracted to something because it looks great. But maybe if it's woolen, I know it'll itch. Or maybe if it's a bit slim and tight, I know I won't be comfortable in it. Or if it's a really nice suit, I don't really wear suits anymore. I mean, I'd never wear ties. I see a lovely tie. Oh, Hermes tie. Oh, I need that in my life. But then a week or a month later, it's still hanging up in the wardrobe. Uh, and that's, this is not just for ladies, this is for men as well. But, you know, whatever is you buy, electronic goods, clothing, whatever that, you know, you get sort of like shiny, ooh, mac pie. Will you be wearing it and using it? Will it have utility in a month or two months? And then there are the certain things, the 80-20 principles. So I always wear Jeffrey West boots. Brown, brogue, Jeffrey West boots, I'll always wear them. It doesn't matter what's in fashion, highs and lows, this year, 10 years, last 10 years, I'll always buy, wear brogue Jeffrey Wests. So if I see bro Jeffrey West, I always buy them. But if, I don't, if they're not bro Jeffrey Wests, I won't buy them, even if I like the look of them or whatever. Uh, and that saves me a lot of money. Um, so you've got those, these staple things. You know, maybe you always like to buy the new iPhone and the Mac and whatever else. There's certain, certain pieces of equipment you get benefit from. So always buy those, which stops you wasting a load of money on other things. Uh, will it be hanging in the wardrobe? You know, will it be just something that, that you never end up using? Okay. Also, um, if, if, any, if you're listening and you get quite attached to the way things look. So I'll give you an example. I've got this clock here. It's about 250 quid, that clock. It is the noisiest clock in the world. Anyone comes here and it just drives them insane and they want to start killing people. Uh, and I saw that clock and I thought it looks beautiful. It's a piece of art. That's great. Uh, and the thing is absolutely noisy as heck. Uh, and so it's completely useless. I should just pick it up and chuck it in the bin. So these chairs that I'm sitting on here, two and a half thousand quid each, beautiful. Uh, and then as soon as the kids uh, get anywhere near, the, near these, I'm like, oh, there's ink on them, which can't get removed because they're all this fancy material. Whereas that one there, that leather thing, that was like, what, 1,500 quid? And it can fit one, two, three, four, five, six, about seven people on it. So one of these is a really good purchase. 
These are not such a good purchase. So, you know, there's the utility, there's the durability, there's the longevity to think about. My wife's brilliant at that. She buys things that last forever and are practical and I just get, ooh, look at these things, they look beautiful. So anyway, next one. Um, set yourself a maximum budget uh, and then as a reward for good results or being disciplined or saving some money and having a bit of disposable, then feel free to go and spend to reward yourself. And if you say to yourself, the maximum I'm going to spend, no matter what, is 200 quid, 500 quid, 50 quid, whatever, and just have a rule to never go over that budget, then, of course, you, uh, the logic squashes the emotions. Because really, addictive spending uh, and overspending is, 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 is because you spend it emotionally. Uh, and over time, you can build your logic into it. So I'll give you another example here. So you can see those pieces of art. Now, I happen to think they look beautiful, um, but I bought them when Pure Evil, Charlie, who's um, become a friend of mine, uh, was on The Apprentice. Oh, it must have been nearly a decade ago now. Um, and he sort of blew up. And I thought, well, you know, I want some art for my, um, for my house. Uh, I like, I'm a magpie. I like bright coloured things. Um, he's just gone big on The Apprentice. There's, they're, they're one of a hundred. They might go up in value. Uh, and they've gone up nearly 100% in value. So I've, you know, used logic rather than emotion, bought something. I mean, I could have spent 25 grand on art or I could have spent five quid on art and not liked it. Or the 25 grand piece of art could have gone down to five grand, in which case I'd have wasted 20 grand. The five quid piece of art I would not have liked, therefore not got any value out of it. So it's not always about how much. It's about value, utility, appreciation, the lack of depreciation. So these have, in fact, like I said, nearly doubled in value. These speakers. So if you can see the speakers in the distance, they're the ones that my daughter put her fingers through. So they're twelve thousand pounds if you buy them new off the, uh, you know, from the dealer. I think I paid about nine thousand pounds for them. Uh, and I watched the depreciation curve of PMC, that that brand, over time, uh, and I'll get back the money I paid. So I haven't spent nine thousand pounds. I have just held capital in those speakers for an amount of time. Now, if I had that in cash. In three years, that £9,000 will be 8700 something like that. Um, whereas, you know, if I hold it in that uh, and, um, you know, there's uh, no depreciation in it, then, you know, I've virtually got all my money back. Now, if I buy wisely, I might even appreciate, um, you know, my money slightly. You don't normally get that in hi-fi equipment. But if you bought, a, you know, a certain piece of hi-fi equipment new, it would halve in value. So you can have, you can have this opulent, this apparently opulent lifestyle, but act actually you're just storing cash rather than actually, you know, depreciating. So um, I could have bought a pair of £5,000 speakers new and they could have gone down to £1,000. Or I can buy a pair of 12,000 speakers for £9,000 and they don't go in value. So you could buy a £2,000 Amiga that goes down to 500 quid, Or you could buy an £8,000 Rolex that goes up to 9000 quid. Which one is better? Well, the reality is it's better to buy the more expensive one, but lose less of your capital or grow the capital a bit. Which leads me on to my fourth point. And my fourth point is turn spending into an inv investing. So I never really got rid of my addictions for spending. I just worked out how to lose the minimum amount of depreciation and buy appreciating assets that I also enjoyed. So watches. Um, I've got some Audemars Piguet and some Rolexes. You know, some of them have gone up 30, 40, 50 percent in value. I've got one Audemars Piguet I paid 32 grand for. In 18 months, it's now 55 grand being sold for on Lux watches. So I'm like, this new watch comes out. Oh, I love it. It's beautiful. Uh, you could buy a 32 grand watch that's worth 11 grand in three years. Or you can buy a 32 grand watch that's worth 50 odd grand in 18 months. Now that is, there's a bit of a caveat here. I think that you've got to enjoy the investment side or you've got to enjoy the asset class. I love watches. I want to learn about them. I've been tracking the price over many years. I'm always looking at watch finder or Lux watches, you know, or Chrono 24. I'm always price comparing. I've got loads of dealers, loads of friends who buy watches. If I had no knowledge of watches, I could go and buy the wrong one and it could lose value. So same with, you know, the Ferraris that I buy. The first Ferrari I ever bought about, what was this, seven or eight years ago now, was a 430 Spider. Paid 67 and a half grand for that, I think, um, and sold it for about the same money five years later. Now, of course, you've got maintenance, you know, you've got, uh, you know, um, um, th servicing and all of that, and that's not factored in. But the actual capital cost... The car didn't go down in five years. And in fact, the worst thing I did was sell it because that car's probably worth, what, 80, 85 grand now. Um, so I've got a little bit of money I want to spend and invest. There's the emotional side of me. Oh, I've got some money in my current account. I want to spend it. How can I turn that spending addiction into investing? So I'm going to buy a Testarossa. Now, when I had my first Ferrari, I was about to buy a Testarossa. 
Back then they were 40 grand. And I thought, I can't have two Ferraris. You know, I'm going to get so many haters. People are just going to absolutely chew me to bits. I can't have two Ferraris. I didn't have any garages at that point either as well, so it probably wasn't wise. Um, but actually, that was a dumb mistake. So they're worth 120 grand now. And I could have had this beautiful vintage, one of my favourite Ferraris ever. I could have bought it for 140 grand. And it'd be worth 120 grand now. So I'm interested in cars and classic cars. I'm interested in watches. I'm interested in art. What can you get interested in that you can spend your money on and don't lose your capital such that even if you do it emotionally, you sell it, you get your capital back. You know, Hermes handbags go up or you could buy various vintage handbags that go up in value. Um, you know, or go, go to vintage shops and buy, you know, the, the designer shoes and things like that that don't go down in value. It's the same with any electrical items. If you buy them at the bottom of the depreciation curve, you buy a three-year-old car, for example. So anything you want to buy, price research, look for second hand, look for bottom of the depreciation curve, look that it could be a potential asset, wait for the sale in January or the end of line. Now, when you compound that over the next 10 or 30 or 40 years, you will save hundreds of thousands of pounds in eroded capital. All right, and then the fifth thing, to cure your spending addictions and overspending. And if this gets really bad, I would recommend you do this for a while. And that is just to give your um, spending authority to someone else. Get rid of all your cards, cut them up, have a budget, have a charge card, buy cash, use cash, spend what you've got. Don't spend any more than what you've got, especially if you've got gambling or other addictions. I'm not judging you. You know, many people I know have that and I don't judge people. We're all addicted to something. Um, but if that's you, Find you know, someone who's smarter than you with money, let them coach you, give them the responsibility and the budget after a while. And then once you feel like you've started to learn better and you could manage your own better, start your own money, start getting some of your money um, and managing it yourself. Uh, and that might be how you want to raise your kids. At first, you manage their money and give them budgets and over time they get a little bit more money to manage. I did a pilot TV show for Channel 4, which could be their primetime show coming soon. Uh, and I was one of the experts and there were people, couples mostly, who are in really bad financial um, situations and debt, different couples from different walks of life. Uh, and you, really, they just lost all control of their money management. And one of them was addicted to gambling. Uh, and, you know, pretty much the only way he started to solve the problem, because he'd been clean for, I think, a couple of years. Respect to you, by the way, for doing that. Um, was taking away all responsibility of the money because it's too much of a temptation. Don't make it a temptation. All right, let's sum up those five things to cure your spending addictions and stop you going over budget. Preserving your capital is the most important thing because the capital creates the income. So wait 24 hours, price compare, let the emotions subside. Could you get it cheaper or would you actually need it? The next thing is, far, fast forward a week, a month, a year, will you actually have used it and got benefit from it? Third thing, give yourself a maximum budget. Fourth thing, give yourself a reward every now and again and go and spend a bit of money and enjoy that to let off the steam, but don't you know, spend a lot. The next thing, turn spending into investing and, and, and make spending a passion and profession merge. And then finally, if you really need to, give someone else control of your budgeting and spending until such time as you can get good at it. So th thanks for tuning in to The Money Podcast. If you're watching the live video, make sure you subscribe to The Money Podcast. Just search Money, Rob Moore, on iTunes or Stitcher. Uh, and if you're listening to The Money Podcast on audio, I'd be really grateful if you could get a review, uh, you know, pass on a review to me. Um, you know, you've, you've had 10, 15 episodes now. I hope you're getting really good value from it. Uh, if I get more reviews, that means that we attract more people into the community, which you know, ultimately you might end up partnering with, working with, borrowing from, lending to, etc. Because, you know, uh, the disruptive entrepreneur and the money communities are not just about me sharing information to you. They are about you becoming part of a community and getting your other needs met. You know, hiring consultants, being a consultant in the interaction of products and services that we exchange to each other in a safe environment. That's the vision I have for these communities not just for me to rant at you. So please leave a review on iTunes or Stitcher. I'd be very grateful. Thanks for tuning in. And remember, if you don't risk anything, you risk everything.